Okay. Directcoach.com. How do you remove this central spot? A focal white opacity is noted on that posterior capsule. This is a case where you see at the beginning, there's a little dot there in the red reflex, a little opacity on the posterior capsule. Now, it looks to be on the anterior surface of the posterior capsule. The patient does not have this in the other eye. There is no notation of prior posterior polar suspicion. So remark, removing the ink marks there, you see we mark the cornea. Those three dots at the 180 meridian are the steep backs that we want. So we'll fill our eye with our viscoelastic. And as you know, I'm sitting temporally here, and I'd like to make my incision on that steep axis where I'm going to line up the torque lens. And we've talked about this before. That's so I don't shift the, the direction of the astigmatism. Right? Astigmatism is a vector. It has both a magnitude and a direction. So the incision will change the magnitude, but because it's on that steep axis, it will not change the direction. All right, time for the rexes. We absolutely want a 5 millimeter rexus. Measuring it out, using my force of poking in, and why is that? Well, if this is a defect in the posterior capsule, and we pop that posterior capsule, I need to be able to put in a sulcus lens. I'd like to put in a lens, with a three-piece lens with the haptics and the sulcus, and then the optic captured behind a very stable 5 millimeter capsular axis. Now you're looking at those torque marks, you're saying, wait a minute, but there are no torque lenses that come in three-piece designs. Not that I'm aware of, not in the U.S. So what would you do? Well, it depends on the degree of astigmatism. If it's a, a torque lens for a diopter of corneal astigmatism, we can just do double incisions, LRI, etc. So there's a little bit of high recession. I'm watching carefully. I want to make sure I don't see a posterior capsule rip, and it looks pretty good, but I'm very cautious, depressurizing it after the fluid wave goes across. Now, you could just treat this like a posterior polar, but I don't really think that's totally necessary. So, getting it to rotate, and that looks pretty good, a little more viscoelastic here. Let's get through the nucleus removal, because that's not the interesting part. Let's just fast forward here. So, we chop the nucleus up, you know our technique, remove it from the eye. That part's going to be very routine or straightforward. Now, if it is, let's go back to the torque lens discussion. If it is a torque lens, it's a higher power torque lens. Let's say three diopters or two diopters of the corneal plane. What would you do if you broke the bag and had to put a, a um, three-piece lens in? Well, then I'd increase the power of the three-piece lens so the patient ended up myopic. So post-op, I'd like for the patient to end up plano minus 250 at axis, at 180, let's say. Therefore, if I had to, then I could wait two, three months to do a beautiful LASIK ablation that's super accurate because it's just laying down a perfect myopic cylinder. I don't want the patient to end up plus 125, minus 250 at 180. That's a spherical equivalent of Plano, but that's a very ugly-looking LASIK ablation. So here at the end, watch carefully now. There's that opacity. Let's zoom in and focus down there. And I'll try to see, can I just barely lift it off? Can I just kind of give a little tug or a rub on that? All right, let's get the bubbles out so we get a better view. Get the bubbles off the endothelium. There it is. And I'll barely suction and try to move it, try to peel it off. And it, no, but it goes in the port. Look at that, in the port and then comes right back out of the port. So now it's kind of really adherent and I'm a little cautious. And I think to myself, oh, what would I want? And this patient is going to get a higher power torque lens, two and a half diopters at the corneal plane for sill. So I don't want to break the bag. So I'm going to think, you know what? The better part of judgment is, let's leave it. Let's go ahead and put the lens in the bag. Maybe we could then go behind the eye well if we needed to and try scrape a little. Could you do a posterior capsorexis, a primary posterior rexis? Sure, you could. I don't know if it's the best answer, though. So there it is. Let's get the lens, and here's that toric lens. And we're going to get this in very carefully in the capsule bag. Notice how I'm going to just slide it under that rexus edge. And I'm not going to let the, the lens, the eye well, poke into the posterior capsule. We don't want that. So there's the lens going in very nicely. Let's get that thing centered up where we want it, get the haptics to unfold. And again, I'm still kind of debating in my head. Do I go behind the capsule now and try to kind of grab that thing? Do I, you know, if the eye's already full of viscoelastic, the lens is in the bag. If there is a small break, I can do something. You know what? I'm going to go without that idea. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to remove a little bit of it. I'll try again one more time, get the viscoelastic out. Look at the reverse pupillary block, by the way. The lighters, the lens, iris, diaphragm, retropulsion syndrome. Yeah, the patient's also highly myopic. 
So now you're thinking, wait a minute, a myopic eye, higher power toric lens. Look, you got a nice Rexus, the lens is in the bag. Isn't this why we have YAG lasers? And you know what? I'm with you. So at this point, I'm going to make the decision just to leave it alone. So what is this spot? You know, it wasn't noted in earlier notes from years prior, so I think it's just some sort of calcification of some lens proteins that just happen to be right there in the center. Maybe it's some vestigial um, developmental thing, but again, it wasn't noted in previous notes from, let's say, five or ten years ago. So that's another little strange thing there. So fixing the lighters, there you go. Let's hydrate this thing up. We're just going to call it um, as it is. I'm going to keep it like this, and then I don't mind. I'll come back and do a YAG laser capsulotomy in a couple of months, and that should really resolve the issue. So my approach to this case, let's leave well enough alone. Thanks for watching.